The main challenges that the use of the internet is generating for the law arise more recently in the context of the use of social media. So for a long time, I think it would be fair to say that the law kept pace with technology very well. But what we had with the growth of social media, so social networking, uh, sites where people could upload their own content like Flickr, so photographs, YouTube for video, is the ability for individuals to have access to a global publication market to repackage and to republish commercial material and to publish their own material. So you've moved from a scenario where you have um, publication providers who could maintain control over you know, quality and content and defamation and copyright infringement to the position now where every individual is a publisher. The legal community uh, has difficulty dealing with anything that is cross-jurisdictional. So we have very different uh, philosophies and underpinning social beliefs, even in the developed countries. So, for example, the European attitude to content regulation depends upon limiting access to things that involve violence or racial hatred. The US is preoccupied with uh, sex, but you can have as much violence as you like. And in Australia, we seem not to like to have too much violence or too much sex, so we're somewhere in the middle. So regulating internet content, be that um, videos on YouTube or be that uh, online games, uh, makes it very difficult for anyone operating in that environment to know which laws they need to comply with. In the lecture, I'll be talking about WikiLeaks as an example of the power of private control of the internet. So what ended shutting WikiLeaks down was not the might and power of the US government, or perhaps it was in an indirect sense, but the power of the private network and platform providers who withdrew the service from WikiLeaks because they were concerned about what the commercial uh, ramifications would be in terms of the US government. The real risk that we are encountering in terms of flow of information and freedom of the internet is that the openness of the internet is going to start closing down. So we complain or we criticise the Chinese, for example, for the Great Firewall of China, but governments are increasingly liking that model because it means that they will have better access over what their citizens can see, read, hear, access, etc. So the difficulties that Google encountered in trying to operate in China may actually uh, start to replicate themselves in other countries as well in the sense that governments will increasingly want to control that. Whether that's for content regulation purposes, so to stop people accessing pornography or violent material, or to restrict the discussion of political communication. So we really are at the crossroads now in terms of whether we are prepared to go down the path of protecting whistleblower type of organisations, of which WikiLeaks is only one, uh, and perhaps then recognising that that is not always going to be something that we want to be published, so releasing control, relinquishing control, or saying we want to go down the path of a, a clean feed, a controlled, a secure network. The US government has put itself in a position where it is completely hypocritical about the notion of freedom of speech on the internet. So you had uh, the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, celebrating the Arab Spring, celebrating the power of, of Twitter, celebrating the power of Facebook, and then turning around and decrying the actions of WikiLeaks in publishing uh, documents. Now, it's important to remember that WikiLeaks is, is a platform, and if WikiLeaks is shut down, as essentially has happened because of the private providers withdrawing service from them, it will only be a matter of time before it is replaced by some other equivalent platform. 